Jeremy Proctor trying to center it. He's back. He scores! Oh my goodness! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Channel 15, Somerville's educational channel. My name is Matt Vogel, back tonight with uh, Hockey Night in Somerville as your Somerville Highlanders take on the Lynn Jets. Tonight I'm joined by my father, Phil. Dad, how are you doing tonight? Great to be here, thanks. Tonight, the Highlanders face on Lynn, who have started the season with a record of zero and eight as the Highlanders come back from their stretch of away games with a record of 4-2-2. Two, and two. Aiden O'Donovan tries to get a shot back in on net and is cleared out and chased down by Josh Amaral. Amaral back into the zone, banks it off the boards behind the net to Joe Carey who reverses it and Aiden O'Donovan picks it up on the reverse side. Aiden gets tripped up on his knees, bats it through the air to the near side as it's kept in by number 11, Luke Rayo. Shot saved by Jack Donovan, and Joe Carey on the attack through the neutral zone. The Cosmo Curtitone, who attempts to dump it in, doesn't get as much on it as he would like to, and it's picked up by Matt Devon behind the net. Try to clear the zone, picked up by Nicky Cicerone, who fights to keep it in and does, but turns the puck over. Kept in the zone by Chris Bonney, but right out after again, Aino Dunham cross ice to Bonnie. Tries to bat out of the air, but does not get it. Number 22, Stephen Downey picks it up and circles the net. And now Lynn breaks it out to the neutral zone. Tries to make a move and gets broken up. Jake McDonald tries to pass it to Tenzin Gassar. Gassar takes down the far boards. Wraps around the net to Jake McDonald, who tries to get it out front. Finding the blue on with a slap shot, up high and the save by Richie Avery. Puck is dumped into the summer blender. We will have an icing. Some good up and down action here to start the game. A little, a little bit sloppy in their own end. Hopefully the Highlanders can take advantage of that. Absolutely, absolutely. This is Jack Donovan's third game starting the season, so hopefully we're having a good game from him. We'll have a face-off here to the left of Avery in the Lynn's defensive zone. Chico on the face-off. Puck squirts out to the slot and gets shot back into the corner. Chico fighting up two Jets. Gets stuck behind the net, out front to Tenzin Gassar, shot and a save by Avery. Lynn up back into the neutral zone. Could not handle it, and you have an offside call just outside the Somerville end. Tonight is the second time this season that Somerville has played Lynn. Their first meeting was on January 1st of this year, New Year's Day, in Lynn at the Connery Rink where Somerville won an astounding nine to one. I'm sure Coach Kevin Wilson is hoping for the same result tonight. Yeah, this is a good chance for Somerville to improve their standing. Definitely. Absolutely, and with, the, with uh, Lynn being in the Northeast Conference, this is, not, this is not a league game 
but every win at this point in the season counts. Almost halfway through. Definitely hoping that Sumbo's not looking past this game. Have to take care of business here tonight. Lynn picks up the, the puck on their end, tries to go far stretch down the ice to number four, Matt Patry. But it's broken up. It's Cosmo Peritone. Skates around one person with a shot on net and a save right up front. Batted down into the corner. Aiden O'Donovan picks it up, makes one move around, makes two, tries to get the pass over, but nobody home. Chris Bonney keeps it in the zone. Pass back out to Barney, who walks to the middle of the ice, takes a shot just wide. Picked up by O'Donovan, who shoots to the point. Marujo, who's having, as a freshman, a great start to the season to his high school career. He gets a shot on net, tries to tip, get a tip, but it's tipped wide. Went over center ice. Number three, Matt Devin, the right wing, gets a shot on net, but it's saved by Donovan. Drops around the net and is batted away by Donovan. Another shot, another save by Donovan. And someone will regain control in the corner. Oh, Donovan to Curtitone goes wide. Curtitone dumps it in, and someone will go for a change. Someone will definitely have some extended zone time here early in the game. Hopefully, they can take advantage of that, but they also got to take care of business in the defensive end. The icing is waved off as Marujo is chased down. Nice hit by Marujo there. Bonnie picks it up behind the net. On his back end, takes it up to Nathan Doe over the blue line. Takes the defenseman wide, gets a shot. Blocked by Avery. Out to Amaral with a shot from the point just wide. Summerall has to start slowing the puck down and working around the neutral, uh, excuse me, the offensive zone. They got a lot of time, and it seems like they're rushing, taking themselves out of position. Yep, move the puck around and get some quality shots. A breakout attempt from Lynn is kept in by Nathan Doe, who's covering the blue line. And that will get blown offside. Yeah, they're spending a lot of time in the offensive zone, but it would be nice to see them get a few more quality shots on that and test this goal. Really. That's a good point. A lot of their shots are from, from tough angle shots, some next to the net. That's how they're going to get some goals on this, on this, uh, this goalie who's letting up some rebounds, get as many shots as you can and crash the net. Get a move inside the side. We'll have another icing call here, and we will have a face-off in the Lynn end. Our last home game, the Highlanders beat Revere Malden Matnon, who has joined the Greater Boston League this year, and they sit with a one-and-one -one record in the GBL, and they've had a stretch of six, six away games, all non-conference. Their next game, is against Everett, home again next Wednesday, January 15th, which will be a big conference game for them. And we have an icing again, yeah, face up the, to the right of Avery. Sorry, Matt, that's the second or third time that uh, Lynn has tried that long stretch pass, and it hasn't connected yet, and they've, they keep bringing the puck back to their own end. Hopefully someone can capitalize on this, but she's going to face off. Loses it back to, to Lynn, who just picked up by Matt Devon, who circles his own, tries to make the pass up to the center ice. Does not connect. Rush broken up by Joe Carey. And Carey bats it out of the zone. McDonald centers it to Tenzin. Cassaro over the blue line, takes him wide. He's got no help right now as someone was on a change. He tries to Pacheco, and Pacheco scores! Chico was questionable today with the flu, but he showed up to play. That was a great look by Tenzin Gassar into the slot as Pachico was trailing, and none, none of the Jets picked him up coming down. And that was, that's a good point. Uh, Tenzin brought it in all alone as the Highlanders were changing. Made a nice look out front. Austin was all alone. Uh, Lynn's a little bit sloppy still in their own defensive end, and, and some of should be able to take advantage of that. With that close, someone takes the lead, one nothing, with about nine minutes left in the first period. Delayed offsides, as someone has all the time in the world breaking it out. 
Bonnie to Aiden O'Donovan takes it over center ice. Gets broken up over the blue line. O'Donovan in the corner tries to center it again. It is gloved out of the air by Richie Avery. Face off to the right of Avery here. Nothing much anyone's going to be able to do with that pass from the corner other than the goalie uh, as it was up and around uh, the waist. Uh, even if it got out front, really nothing anybody could do to get that home. Puck is dumped over to the near side where O'Donnell, facing some coverage, turns the puck over. And a nice hit by Nicky Cicerone. We will have a delayed penalty on Lynn as Dylan Maruja has the puck in the neutral zone, tries to pass up to Aiden O'Donovan. The Highlanders have pulled the goalie, it is now six on five, and we will have the play blown dead, and the Highlanders will have their first power play of the night. This power play will be a really good opportunity for them to capitalize, maybe extend their lead to two nothing. And keep the momentum in the Lynn end. Face off to the left of Avery. Somerville's first power play unit out there with Bonnie you know, done out at the point. Cosmo Curtitone, Austin Pacheco, and Jake McDonald at forward. Puck is dumped out of the zone as O'Donovan takes into Somerville's defensive zone, passes over to Chris Bonnie, looking at Austin in the middle, Pacheco. Pacheco takes it wide to the corner, circles the net, looking for a pass, and dumps it back to Aiden O'Donovan. O'Donovan down to Pacheco, who looks wide. Cosmo Curtitone, who misses the net. That was a good shot by Curtitone. Just too high. O'Donovan keeps it in the zone. Chico breaking through the center of the ice. Cosmo Curtitone dumps it back down, but nobody home. It's a foot race. Jake McDonald, who wins it. O'Donovan tries to fire a slap shot across the ice. That's a tough one to, to handle. Curtitone centers it to Chico, who mishandles it and back into the near corner. But a slap shot from the point by Pacheco, almost tipped by Jake McDonald, but that puck goes wide. McDonald hands it in the corner, and it's back out of the point. Cosmo Curtitone on the half wall all alone, takes it in, tries to get a shot, but it's a bad angle. He realized that and didn't want to turn the puck over. Curtitone draws in the winger there, cannot get a shot off, and it is shot wide by Chris Bonney. 37 seconds to go on the summer power play. McDonald in the corner. Cannot get, get the, the power play set up and is dumped down to the summer line by number three, Matt Devin, as Lynn goes for a change. A lot of puck movement there. Uh, all on the perimeter, though, for summer. We've got to get it towards the net. Shots are key in this game. The more shots, the more chances you have on a rebound. 12 seconds now on the Summerville power play. Curtitone on the half wall. Back over to Chris Barney, who takes a slap shot and is saved by Richie Avery. Summerville had a good opportunity there earlier on the power play. Good, some good puck movement. Austin Pacheco finding Cosmo Curtitone far side. Unfortunately, Cosmo shot a little bit high. Five seconds left in the Summerville power play. And Lynn wins the draw and dumps the puck down. The penalty expires. It is now even strength with six minutes and 20 seconds left in the first period as Joe Carey circles the net and tries to center it. Lynn attempting to break it out of their zone. They do get it out of the zone, but it's turned over in the neutral zone. We will have no ice on the dumping by Nathan Doe. Stephen Downey takes puck behind the net, but is broken up. And Tenzin shoots on the loose puck and scores. Some of will go up 2-0. That was some nice forechecking by Nicky Cicerone. Broke the puck free, got it out front to Tenzin, who put it home. The Lynn Jets chasing the puck carrier behind the net, leaving Tenzin open in the slot, similar to the first goal, where Pacheco is trailing and get, didn't get picked up by anybody. Opens up in the slot and shoot for a goal. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in the first period. Somerville is up 2-0. Kept in the zone by Lynn and wrapped around by Austin Pacheco. Joe Carey couldn't handle that puck. And it's down shot into the Somerville end and shot out of the zone as number 12, 
Sean Leonard could not keep it in. A blind pass by number four. Matt Petri got intercepted and passed back into the zone and Lynn jumps down the other end on net so we will have no icing. Up to the Somerville end again as Donovan comes behind them to play it. Josh Amaral picks it up and makes an outlet pass to Peter Lounsbury. Shot on the net goes wide. We would chip Andrew Pasquale chasing the puck but could not get there in time. And it is picked up by number 24, John McDonald. Sent cross ice, so Lynn. We'll try to set something up here. We have a slap shot blocked by Joe Carey. That went off his shin pads. Behind the back pass is intercepted by Austin Pacheco, who looks wide to Aiden O'Donovan. O'Donovan over the blue line, looks for a shot. Passes to Pasqualino, who couldn't get a handle on it. Needs to pull that trigger a little bit quicker. Cicerone over the blue line, looking for a pass with skates. Almost into Aiden O'Donovan, he drops it and someone will lose his possession. Kept in by number 12, Cosmo Pernatone, who dumps it in the zone, and it's picked up by Stephen Downey. No icing here, as Marujo picks it up behind the net. He banks it up the boards to himself and looks for Cosmo as an outlet pass. There's pressure on him right away. And the puck squirts out to the neutral zone, and it's dumped back in. Puck is held in the blue line, so there will be no offsides here. Tries to center it to number 17. Dylan Copperthorne and is broken up. Long stretch pass to Cosmo Curitone. Looking for Aiden O'Donovan. Shot in the traffic. Chris Bonney takes it in the zone to the left of Avery. Tries to pass it out. Curitone with a slap shot. That gets tipped wide. Brought to the neutral zone by Copperthorne, who tries to shoot it on net. Big block by Dylan Marujo. The Highlanders take it to the neutral zone again. Aiden O'Donovan has a hard time handling that pass, and it's picked up by Chris Bonney, who has a delayed offside and has to abandon it. Two minutes and 50 seconds left in the first period. That puck is deflected high and up into the rafters. We'll have a stoppage play and face off outside the zone. You, know, you mentioned earlier, Matt, that Lynn is coming into the game at 0 and 8. It's not hard to see why they're struggling this year. Uh, difficult time getting out of their zone, and when they do, it's really just whacking it up the boards. And even coming into the offensive zone, it's really just dumping it in or skating it over and taking a shot on net. No really puck movement uh, that will allow them to be successful. That's a good point. When they do have the puck uh, control in the offensive zone in Somerville's end, I've seen several times some blind passes behind the back passes, nobody home. They seem to be panicking with the puck. Very, very few passes, and even when you do, they're not quality passes. That shot is tied up by Richie Avery. We'll have another face-off to the right of Avery in the Lynn end. Coach Wilson calling play number two. <laughs> Chip. Play Pass number two does not work. The puck is passed to number three, Matt Devin in the middle of the zone. Shot and save by Jack Donovan. Several heading up ice. Tenzi Gassar loses the puck into the corner he, as he wraps the net. Looking for a pass out front is Austin Chico, similar to the goal he scored earlier. Josh Amaral pass, shoots the puck and it is tipped by Austin Pacheco in the slot and Somerville will take a late first period 3-0 lead. Great hand guy coordination there with Austin. Somerville seems to be able to have quite a few opportunities with open men in front of the net. Lynn defenders are not paying attention to those guys coming in late, coming down the middle of the slot. That shot right there too, it looked like Richie Avery had a hard time seeing that. And it's even tougher when the puck, when the puck gets deflected. They need to get their defenseman in, in front of the net so, uh, so he can see the shooting lane. Number 29, Cam Hunt bats the puck into the corner as Nathan Doe is under pressure, tries to pass it up to Andrew Pasqualino and Doe to the blue line to Maruja. Maruja with a shot, far toe, that is blocked away by Avery into the corner. Picked up by Bonnie at the far blue line. Puck is again shot down 
and we will have an icing. Just another example we were talking about earlier, how Lynn is having a difficult time getting the puck out of their end. That has to be the fourth or fifth at least icing called on them tonight. Another face off to the right of Avery as Nikki Cicerone faces off. Nikki loses that face off, but Aiden O'Donovan picks up the puck in the corner. Marujo on the far side, dumps it high off the glass and back into the zone. Aiden O'Donovan throws his weight around and someone comes out with the puck. Pernison treaches to keep control of the puck, tries to get a shot off, but there's nothing enough on it. Attempted breakout pass. That was a bouncing puck. Tough to handle. That bounces over Chris Bonney's stick. He erases back to try to play it. Number three, Matt Devin backhands it. He had Jack Dunneman moving side to side. It was a good move by him to pull it back to his near side on his backhand. In a light backhand pass, Jack Dunneman's left foot. The score is now three to one with one minute and six seconds left in the first period. A little confusion there in the Somerville defensive end. Mishandling the puck, Lynn's able to pick it up and go in for a score. That's what happens. No matter what the team you're playing record is, no matter how you think they are, a couple seconds of a, of a breakdown, and that's what happens. Teams can take advantage of that. You know, Donovan tries to make a move, but falls, and Lynn takes through the neutral zone. Offside call here. Oh. Oh, Donovan picks, pickpockets him, so we will not have the offside call. 48 seconds left in the period. Joe Bonnie the blind, makes a move. Excuse me, Joe Carey. Where Aino Donovan takes a shot that is blocked by number 24, John McDonald. Joe Carey, the shot from the blue line. Attempted tip by Nicky Cicero. That's good heads up hockey by him. He was coming out of the corner and make a little spin move. There's that stretch pass again. No icing here. Somerville loses the race to the puck. The puck is shot out front. And Luke Rayo's shot goes over Jack Donovan's head. Curtitola makes a rush up the ice with 10 seconds left. And Lynn will just dump it into the Somerville end as the first period ends. So at the end of the first period, we have a score of 3-1 to one Somerville. Some will just continue to move the puck around the offensive end, get some quality shots, and take care of business in their own end, and hopefully this game ends the way they want it to. It looks like in this first period, they definitely have control of this game so far. Hopefully, Coach Kevin Wilson can keep their momentum going into the second period. And we will be back with second period action at Hockey Night in Somerville here in Somerville, Mass. Takes him wide. He's got no help right now. And Somerville's on a change. He tries to have a Chico. And Pacheco scores! And a dumping by Nathan Doe. Steven Downey takes puck behind the net, but it's broken up. And Tenzin shoots on the loose puck and scores. Several heading up by his Tenzin Gassar loses the puck into the corner. He actually wraps the net. Looking for a pass out front. It's awesome. Chico, similar to the goal he scored earlier. Josh Amaral pass, shoots the puck and it is tipped by Austin Pacheco in the slot and so attempted breakout pass. That was a bouncing puck. Tough to handle. That bounces over Chris Bonney's stick. He erases back to try to play it. Number three, Matt Devin backhands it. Scores now three to one. Welcome back to Educational Channel 15, and we are back here at Veterans Royal Rink with second period action as your Highlanders lead the Lynn Jets three to one. Let's hope for more of the same here in the second period. Somerville again has the defense playing up on the wing position on the faceoff. I'm sure in between periods, Lynn head coach Mike Roberts really stressed the fact that they should stop, they should settle down with the puck, start moving around instead of rushing passes and just trying to dump it out off the glass, try to set something up so they can kind of change the pace of this game. Nicky Cicerone picks it up in the neutral zone, off the banks off the boards to Aaron Donovan who loses the puck in the middle of the ice. The puck is kept in by Joe Carey, dumped down low with no pressure. Stephen Downey reverses the puck back over to John McDonald, and Lynn is on the attack. Matt Devon drops the puck back to Matt Petrie. 
who loses it. Josh Amaral wraps around the boards and is picked up by Lynn. Matt Devin circles the net, tries to wrap around, but Jack Donovan is right there to deny that. Aiden O'Donovan high off the glass. Kept in the zone by number 22, Stephen Downey. Shot on net, but goes wide left. And a desperate attempt to clear the puck out. Joe Carey goes off the boards. We will have an icing call, and we'll come all the way back into the Summerville end. This period started out completely opposite of what the first period did. Summerville struggling to get the puck out of their end, kind of running around a little bit. Got to settle down, make some good plays, quality breakouts out of their end. It's really important for Summerville not to get ahead of themselves in this game. They, are, they do have a two-goal lead, but that doesn't mean in any way to give up or think they have the game in the bag until the final buzzer. Tenzin Gassar circles the net, looks for a pass, but he reverses it, hoping Pacheco would get there. He makes a bank move off the boards to himself. He loses it, and the puck is out. Bill Marujo at the half wall tries to get a shot on net that is deflected. Jake McDonald picks it up, cycles it down low. Pacheco behind the net, back to Gassar. Gassar looking for a pass to McDonald. McDonald shot and is just wide. The Highlanders really like to do, like to look for the guy in the middle of the ice. They're moving their defense, their wingers around, trying to find the open guy. Gassar with the puck at the top of the circle. Puck squirts loose to the right of Avery. McDonald picks it up and tries to cycle it back down low, but it's intercepted. Body keeps the puck in, tries to get a shot, and it's kicked out to Dylan Marujo. Looking wide to Chris Bonney. Up the boards to Jake McDonald. McDonald through the big red S over the blue line. Look for a pass, but nobody home. Chris Bonia back outside the zone. Over to Dylan Marujo, tries to center it to Curtitone in his feet, and it kicks back out to Marujo. Marujo battling with number 17, Dylan Copperthorne. Moves the puck, and Chris Bonney picks it up. As Curtitone picks it up on the half wall, chips it to Bonnie. Bonnie, with Aiden O'Donovan trailing into the zone, tries to center it, and O'Donovan could not get there in time. Cicero with a shot from the point. That is. That was a nice pickup by Chris Bonney, who gets the shot and scores off Cicero's attempted shot from the half wall. The Highlanders take a 4 0 lead. With 11 sec, 11 minutes. That's 4-1, man. Oh, sorry about that. 4-1. to one With 11 minutes and 53 seconds in the second period. A lot of extended zone time there for Somerville. All start with a quality breakout out of their end. Settling down after that first shift of the period. Got Lynn back on their heels again. Devin gets a shot that is saved by Jack Donovan. And is kept in the zone by Lynn. Joe Carey. Fires it up to through center ice. Cosmo Curtitone with a shot that's blocked by Avery's pads as he goes down to the butterfly. O'Donovan tries to find the far defenseman. Josh Amaral's too far out of the zone. He sends it across to Joe Carey, who sends it right back to Amaral. And O'Donovan tumbles the muffin back into the far offensive zone, the corner. Matt Devin with the move through Joe Carey as he's race as. He wins the foot race and turns it over right away to Joe Carey. Joe Carey tries to give it up to Cicerone. And Aiden O'Donovan picks up the loose puck. O'Donovan to Curtitone. Curtitone looking for a backhand pass to Cicerone, who just misses it. Nice look there in front. Cosmo behind the net tries to center it again to O'Donovan. O'Donovan outbodied. Cicerone drop pass to Josh Amaral, who tries to go cross to Joe Carey, but misfired on the pass. O'Donovan moves out of the zone, out of the way of a hit, and turns the puck over at the blue line. Lynn had a two-on-one going to the Summerville zone. One of them was offside, so we'll have a face-off outside the Summerville zone. Lynn definitely having some trouble keeping up with the Summerville skaters. Summerville is quicker, faster. They're a little bit smaller. Lynn does have a size advantage in, in most cases, but they just seem to have trouble keeping up with the Summerville forwards. Here's a Nathan Doe line with Andrew Pasquilino 
and Peter Lounsbury. Nathan Doe wins the faceoff. He tries to carry it over center ice. And Lounsbury dumps it in just not hard enough. And Ricky Johnson fires the puck out to center ice. Dumped in the zone by Devin Copperthorne behind the net as Jack Dunneman comes out to play it. He mishandles it. And there's a pass out front, but nobody home. Lounsbury back behind the net, wraps it around to the far side as Joe Carey picks it up on the half wall, looks to center it. Amaral looking for a pass to Lounsbury, who makes a nice backhand pass. Just a little behind Nathan Doe as Lynn picks it up. Over the blue line, Joe Carey tries to go for a big hit but misses. Joe Carey, one of the most physical players in the Somerville team. He's always good for a big hit, one or two big hits a game. Yep, I'm waiting for that tonight, Matt. See the two on one, Lynn has carried the puck as Matt Devin takes the shot, but it's deflected by the back checker, Nathan Doe, up out of play, and we'll have a face off in the Somerville end. That was a really good back check by Nathan Doe. You can see what I was talking about that uh, number three for Lynn, Matt Devin, had a, had a clear uh, space advantage. And it closed very quickly with the speed of Nathan Doe. That was a good play by Doe with that back check that just shows you can't give up even if you think you're beat. Can't give up on a play. Somerville has a three on one coming into the, into the Lynn end. Tenzin Gassar taking a shot. It is saved by Avery. Gassar looking for a pass in the middle of the ice. Tries to go to Jake McDonald. Jake McDonald with a shot. Oh, he tried to pass that to Austin Chico. That's a case where you're trying to do too much passing. Chris Bonnie at the blue line, fires, that's wide. Chico number, picks it up and goes underneath to Tenzin Gassar. Number three, Matt Devin and Lynn do, pulling some double duty. Looking for a penalty. Had his hand up like he was the ref. Should worry about playing the game. Devin wraps it around to number four, Matt Patry, who centers it to Luke Rayo. Luke Rayo coming on the far side, gets a shot from a bad angle, saved by Gunnerman. Matt Devin with a block shot. Austin Chico was there, takes that off the shins. Tends to the side, tries to jump it in, and it's knocked down. Matt Devin over the blue line, tries to make a move, gets caught up, and there's a penalty on number 11, Luke Rayo, for interference, and some will have their second power play of the night. Dylan Marujo taking down Austin Pacheco there after the whistle. <laughs> so with eight minutes and 26 seconds left to go in the first period, of the second period, excuse me, some will have their second power play of the night, again looking to extend their lead. Cicerone on the faceoff. Gassar comes in and takes that back to the point. Josh Amaral looking to go down in the corner. Tenzin Gassar must have thought that was for him. He tried to play it. It was deflected off his feet and back down the summer will end. Bonnie behind the net. Fakes the pass to Mickey Cicerone and Bonnie will take it through the ice, center ice. Some will have a hard time breaking it in the zone as they get broken up. Got to take better care of the puck coming in through the neutral zone. Number 17. Devin Copperthorne looked like he was covering four guys at once there. And now some will, will try to set something up in the offensive zone. Nathan Doe circles that. He gets hit and knocked down. The puck comes up to the blue line as Josh Amaral tries to get a shot. Tipped by Nicky Cicerone and just wide off the glass. When you have those shots from the point, you'd like to see some traffic in front of the net and maybe get a stick on it. Cicerone back to Bonnie, the point, who tries to get a shot, but is blocked. Cicerone picks it up on the half wall, skates it in the center ice, tries to pass over to Gassar, and Gassar couldn't handle it. Gassar on the half wall to Amaral. He almost whipped in that pass and came out of the zone, but Josh Amaral handles it. Looking for the give and go, Nathan Doe. Lynn getting lazy to the puck, too. Devin. Excuse me, Matt Devin could have won that race easily. He must have been exhausted because as soon as the puck gets dumped down the ice, he headed straight for the bench. Yeah, he spent a lot of time on the ice tonight. Matt Patry centers it to number 25, Matt Leonard, who tries to get a shot that's tipped up high into the corner. 12 seconds left in the Sunville power play. O'Donovan into Lynn territory, tries to go wide. Still circling the zone, and he turns that puck over to Matt Patry, who dumps it out. 
Both teams back at full strength. Shot and score! Aiden O'Donovan with a good pass from Austin Pacheco extends the summer of a lead five to one. Again, great puck movement, get the goalie moving side to side, and good things will happen. Goal did not come on the power play, but it sure looked like they were still outmanning uh, Lynn in their own end. Before this game, I was talking to coach Colin Hogan, who this year, in his first year of coaching as the head coach of Somerville's junior varsity team, and he was telling me that Aiden O'Donovan has scored a goal in every game so far, and this extends his streak to nine games. Yeah, they're going to be counting on Aiden O'Donovan for a couple more years to come to, to carry the offense on this team. O'Donovan started playing varsity hockey in eighth grade and with the graduation of the last two or three senior classes he has been taking on a lot of responsibility in a short amount of time. He's only a sophomore playing on the first line. In the future he'll be one of the leaders on this team but so far he's having a really good season in the sophomore year. And here is O'Donovan over the blue line, tries to drop it to Austin Pacheco. It's behind the net to O'Donovan who tries to get it in the middle to Cosmo Curtitone. And that's tipped down into the summer of the end. Some will really likes looking for that, moving their defense around, moving their wings, and looking for the open guy in the slot. Chico circles the net here. Dumps the puck back down low to Curtitone, who's looking for a pass. Tries to get that center. Austin Pacheco misfires on that just a little bit, and that is shot wide. And back down into the corner. Cosmo Curtitone with heavy pressure on number 29, Cam Hunt. And Matt Devin takes the puck and just flips it out of the Somerville end, and we will have a stoppage of play for an icing. That seems to be Lynn's strategy. When they get pinned down on their own end for a couple of minutes, they'll dump it out of their end. And uh, they usually wind up back in their own end with an icing. It looks like some of us taking this opportunity this game with this lead in the second period to give some of their newer, younger guys some ice time. Just off the ice right now is number 11, Alex Morgan, who was a freshman this year, as well as number 15 is seeing the ice, Peter Lounsbury. In this game, Hopefully the Highlanders keep, can keep up this momentum. They put a few more in so some of these young guys can get more ice time. Yep, that experience will pay off in the long run. A lot of some of those players joined when there was a really young team. So as, as this group has, uh, has gotten older and gone through high school, they've, they kind of they understand what it takes to play at this level. And they've been coached, they've been under the same coaching staff for a few years. So they know what the coaching staff expects. And um, you'll see that over the last few years, you've noticed that, that some kids that were younger have started to take on some leadership roles. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference. There was uh, several years ago, there was turnover in coaching every one or two years. Having some stability there, both at the JV and the varsity level, uh, the plans get taught early when they're younger and they carry it right through to their senior year. Yeah, this is, this is coach, head coach Kevin Wilson's, I believe, fifth year, fifth year coaching, which is it's, it's good for, for some of these players to have some consistency in the way they play the game and the systems that these, that these coaches run. Um, and even at the JV level, this is, this is uh, the first year where, again, Colin Hogan is the head coach of the junior varsity team, and he's been an assistant coach under Kevin Wilson for the past four or five years as well. So as these kids go from junior varsity to varsity, they'll see some, some uh, familiar faces. Devin tries to chip behind the net and almost gets Devin, uh, excuse me, Aiden O'Donovan behind the net, behind the head and behind his head. Cosmo Curtitone tries to make a move and he scores! What a move by Cosmo Curtitone, forehand, or excuse me, backhand, forehand and through the legs as some of it will take a six to one lead with three minutes and 26 seconds left in the second period. Lynn defenders allowing Cosmo Curtitone to just kind of skate around in the, their own end, uh, not giving their goalie Richie Avery much help. Exactly, and, and a goalie can only do so much. He's made some he's made some some good saves, but there's only so many you can make when you, when you can't see the puck. You're not getting much help. 
And a lot of the summer will goals have come with open men in front of the net. They make that pass in front. The goalie really has no chance. Puck from the near half wall as Matt Devon picks it up and circles it behind the net. I'm not sure Matt Devon ever leaves the ice. <laughs> he definitely has probably the most ice time on this Lynn team. Puck is centered and batted away by Lynn out to the neutral yeah, zone. Brady Roach sighting. And Brady Roach takes the puck into the summer and passes up to Nicky Cicero. Cicero looking for a pass, a hard pass over to Aiden O'Donovan who cross ice another hard pass to Cosmo Curtitone. He's looking for a pass. And a slap shot by Aiden O'Donovan, a one-time, and Somerville with another goal, a 7-1 to -one lead in the second period. That was some good concentration by Aiden O'Donovan getting hit from behind and knocked down in the middle of that shot and still being able to put it home. That's a really good example of good passing and awareness of where everybody is on the ice. And with that goal, Lynn will be changing their goalie as Avery comes out. And number 33, Steven DiFilippo comes in. Let's see if he has any better luck with the guys in front of him. Puck it down into the Somerville end. As Pasqualino tries to center it and gets tied up. And number 10, Connor Bernardo dumps it down deep. Over Somerville's blue line, and Joe Carey picks it up as he circles the net, looking to make looking to break the puck out. Up the board to number 15, Peter Lounsbury out to center ice, and turns the puck over. Joe Carey looking for Andrew Pasqualino, who was circling to come back into the play, wasn't aware that the puck is coming right back up, and a big hit by Andrew Pasqualino. But mostly glass there. Joe Carey shot from the point that is saved by DiFilippo and into the corner. We'll have another icing here as number 20, Pat McHale, shoots the puck down the ice in a desperate attempt to get a line change. Face off to the right of DiFilippo here. We will have Somerville's first line out again. Or excuse me, second line, but Coach Kevin Wilson has put Austin Pacheco here at center. Pacheco loses that face off. Another attempt at a long pass as Matt Devon chases the puck down, but will not get there in time. And yet again, another icing. The puck will come all the way back down into the Lynn end. It's really not surprising that Lynn spends so much time in their own end. They have enough trouble getting it out of their end, and then when they ice at the puck so much, it just comes right back again. It's tough to make a play when you're when you're looking for that home run pass every time. It's, guys can't catch up to it. Sometimes it's too high, sometimes it's too hard. It might be worth trying a different strategy because that one's certainly not working. Matt Devin takes a pass behind his back to the slap shot from the top of the circle into Jack Donovan's chest with a minute and 21 seconds to go in the second period. And you see there as they didn't try the home run pass. They bring the puck out of their end over the summer of the blue line and they are able to get a quality shot on that. I don't know if, if uh, head coach Mike Roberts, if that's his game plan, but some of these some of these win players are getting a little overzealous trying to look for that, trying to get behind the summer of the defenseman. Not only leaving their team shorthanded in the defensive zone, but also putting them at risk to ice the puck if they miss that pass. The puck is dumped back down to the Somerville end as Josh Amaral picks it up. Pass 10 to, 10 to the Gassar, who loses it in the neutral zone. Poke checks it, and Jake McDonald... Keep your head up. ...was not looking and gets hit by Matt Patry. Got to keep your head on a swivel, especially coming through the neutral zone. Oh, here we go. Alex Morgan attempts to break the, the play up. Josh Amaral picked up the puck and tries to get it out of the zone. He does, but onto a Lynn player stick, and that will be offside as he did, probably didn't think that he kept it in the zone or tried to try to get away with it. Play till you hear the whistle. Coach Kevin stresses that a lot in practice. Play till the whistle. Don't give up on it, especially if the goalie ties it up. Don't give up till you hear the whistle. We have 20 seconds, 27, excuse me, seconds left in the second period as Joe Carey takes it over his own blue line, passes up to Andrew Pasqualino, and he loses it as 
poke check back down deep into the zone by Nathan Doe, who goes behind the net. Devin Coppathorn centers it to Matt Leonard, who gets broken up by Brady Roche. And as the buzzer sounds, Somerville heads into the locker room with a 7-1 to one lead against these Lynn Jets. And it will be important for Somerville in the third period to continue playing their game. You don't want to sit back. You don't want to take any shifts off. You continue to play your game every shift. And you got to watch, too. Uh, you got to be careful that Lynn doesn't start, you know, getting frustrated even more and start taking cheap shots, throwing their weight around. Let's hope they just bring this home clean. That's a good point. I'm sure Coach Kevin Wilson will, will stress that in the locker room. Do not give up. He's always been a big play to the buzzer guy. And uh, he's he's good friends with the coach Mike, Mike Roberts, so he knows he knows this team and how they play. And I'm sure that he will again make sure that his players keep their head on a swivel. I'm sure you'll start to see a lot of young guys play in the third period, get more ice time. And uh, we will see uh, when we return for some third period action on Hockey Night in Somerville. With Aiden O'Donovan trailing into the zone, tries to center it. And O'Donovan could not get there in time. Cicero with a shot from the point. That was a nice pickup by Chris Bonney, who gets the shot and scores. Both teams back at full strength. Shot and score! Aiden O'Donovan with a good pass from Austin Pacheco extends the summer of a lead 5 to 1 behind his head. Talking about Kernitone, tries to make a move, and he scores! As Somerville will take a 6-1 to one lead with another hard pass to Cosmo Kernitone. He's looking for a pass. And a slap shot by Aiden O'Donovan at one time, and Somerville with another goal, a 7-1 to one lead. Welcome back to third period action, as Somerville is beating the Jets 7-1. to one. And Somerville wins the faceoff, and we will have immediate blown off sides. What do you think we can expect from this uh, from this Lynn team in this third period? Truthfully, probably more of the same. A uh, little bit of sloppy play, dumping the puck in, not really getting any quality shots. Um, unfortunately, uh, they, they've been struggling all game. I really don't see that turning around. Hopefully, some of them keep the pressure on. As this is, as of right now, shaping up to be a big win for them. But still a lot of hockey left. I've seen crazier things happen. And Matt Devin takes over the blue line. Goes back in on Jack Donovan, who makes the save. It looked like he was struggling to find that, but it's stuck under his pad. Yeah, one of the lid players was pointing that it was in, but the ref quickly waved it off. And we will have a face-off in the summer will end to the left of Dunny. Nathan Doe here in the face-off. He loses that. Matt Devin again, still on the ice. Tries to make a move past Josh Amaral, but is broken up. This Lynn team seems to really rely a lot on this first line of Matt Devon, Luke Rayo, and Matt Petrie. They do have a lot of ice time tonight. Well, there's another error in their own end. Uh, Lynn defenseman swung the puck around right on his own net. Good thing the goalie is paying attention. <laughs> you can never be too careful when your own team has the puck in their own zone. Always got to be paying attention. A minute into the third period, we have a face-off as Connor Boudreaux lines up. Attempted dump out by Somerville and is caught in the half wall and turned over as Josh Amaral picks it up through the neutral zone, tries to make a move, and is offside. Can't start getting too fancy now trying to be a superstar here. You just gotta keep playing your hockey, keep playing, keep playing your game plan. Don't try to get selfish and, and try to be a superstar. Nothing here is gonna be on ESPN, so keep playing team hockey, keep playing hard hockey, and come out with a W. Alex Morgan cross ice to Josh Amaral, who dumps it down deep. Pascalino four checking and seem to just watch the defensive behind the net. That's, that's an opportunity where you gotta put some pressure on him, don't give him that, that time. 
This Flint team is, has, has turned the puck over quite a bit. There's no ice on this play as Josh Amaral picks it up and loses it. Alex Morgan will pick it up and we, it looks like we have a summer little penalty on Josh Amaral for a trip and for the first time tonight, someone will be down shorthanded for the 5-1-4. I would expect the refs to be paying a little bit more close attention to some of them in those situations and also maybe letting a few more of the icing calls go and keeping the clock moving. With a game like this, I absolutely agree. As some of them lines up five on four, they win the faceoff. And Chris Bonney shoots at the length of the ice. Tends to start with a hard four check on Matt Devin. Gets his stick on his stick. Shot saved by Jack Donovan. And Lynn circles his own, tries to pass it out, but can't keep it in. They had a guy in front there, looking to shoot from everywhere, but you gotta move the puck and get your opportunities. Lynn's gotta look, this is the opportunity for them to kind of slow the game down, kind of go at their own pace, don't rush, don't make those passes. Kassar breaks up the Jets' breakout. He centers it. Do Do shoots and goes five hole on Di Filippo to take an eight to one lead with a short handed goal. Again, another instance of Somerville having a guy open in front of the net. Number three, Matt Devon for Lynn on defense this time uh, on the Lynn power play. Coughed up the puck in his own end and, and uh, really cost him. Still got over a minute to kill here for Somerville. Some of them remain shorthanded as the dump in is on net and is bobbled a little bit by DiFilippo, but he keeps possession of it. Attempted pass to number 17, Devin Copperthorne, is misread and we will have an icing. Even on the power play, Lynn likes to ice the puck. Some of them here with a the change of the forwards. For Connor Bernardo. And Peter Lounsbury. Two younger guys, Brady Roach on D and Joe Carey. This is a very young penalty killing unit someone has on the ice right now. Coach Wilson really trying to see what these younger kids have got with the seven goal lead. It's a great opportunity to see that. Lounsbury tries to flip it, flip it out, doesn't get a stick on it. Joe Carey, same thing, and it's blocked against the boards. Loose puck in the near corner, Joe Carey fighting for it and he gets it out of the zone. No ice. Got to have one of these Peter guys Lounsbury outside. wins the race and tries to get it out front as this team has tried to, done, tried to do all night, but nobody home. Little mistake there by the sum of the penalty killers. Both of these guys behind the net at the same time. Got to have one man out high. 15 seconds left in the Lynn power play as the puck is wrapped around to Bernardo. He can't get it in Joe Carey, high off the glass. Oh, and it's kept in by Cam Hunt. Not sure he knew that. Joe Carey with, with no ice as the penalty expired. We will get one Somerville defenseman change. Joe Carey looking for a change too. And there he goes. Peter Lounsbury tries to center it. It's to O'Donovan. There's another icing by Lynn. Nice handled it. And there's oh, no off. icing. Ref waves that off as Marujo holds it behind the net, waiting for his forwards to change to set something up. I think they thought he could play that. That's why they waved off the icing. Aiden O'Donovan takes the puck over the blue line. He's got help, Cosmo Curtitone, but he try, slows it down, tries to set something up, gives it to Chris Bonney at the blue line. Bonney over to Marujo. Marujo down deep to Curtitone. Curtitone to the mid centers it to Aiden O'Donovan. Aiden loses the puck and, will, and the goalie, Steven DiFilippo, will tie it up with a face off to the left of DiFilippo. 10 minutes and 26 seconds left in the third period. A few of Somerville's upcoming games, as I said earlier, Wednesday, January 15th, they were playing conference opponent, GBL opponent, Everett. That will be a big game. Everett's having a pretty good season so far. Yeah, there's definitely some competition in the GBL this year with Medford, Everett, and Revere, the combination of Revere, Malden, and Matinon. After that, they'll play Watertown in Watertown, Northeast Regional in Malden, in St. Joseph's at Warrior Arena in Brighton, the Bruins practice facility. And then after that, February 1st, we are back home against Swampscott. 
who Somerville just had a big win over a few games ago, I believe. Yeah, they played them a couple of weeks ago at Salem State and came away with the win. Somerville looking like they're just moving the puck around the perimeter now at this point in the game. Not too many shots on net while still controlling the play. O'Donovan winds up in that shot. The shot in the traffic is 22. Steven Downey he takes it out. He's takes still it off hurting his He's probably looking for a change. He's limping around his defensive zone. Puck gets cleared out and he heads straight to the bench. And with that dump it to the Somerville end, we will have yet another icing. That was a good point. Somerville's moving the puck around the perimeter a lot. They seem to be trying, trying to slow the game down, trying to work on some things like game time situation and stuff that, that uh, they don't have the chance to in practice. But definitely not shooting as much as they had been earlier. Here's a break. Definitely working his puck movement. Matt Devin crosses the blue line. Looks to pass it. He gets broken up by Alex Morgan, the freshman. Shot wide. Picked up by Ricky Johnson at the point. He tries to get a shot. That's broken up. Sometimes it's better to pass. Sometimes it's better to shoot. Looks like he passed up a shot there to try and make the pass. But he might have had a better opportunity if he shot it himself. Matt Devin with a shot from the far half wall into Jack Donovan's pads, and we will have a stoppage of play. Nathan Doe here on the draw, as Jake McDonald flies in and takes the tied up puck. Goes cross ice to Andrew Pascalino, tries to make a move, he does, and then loses the puck as he gets hit by 24, John McDonald. Puck comes out of the Lynn end as Josh Amaral circles back, looking for a pass. Over to Jake McDonald on the far side. McDonald loses the puck at center ice, and Matt Patry comes in. It's broken up by Amaral. Amaral tries to center it, and he's kicked away by Luke Rayo. Rayo with a shot that is blockered down by, <coughs> excuse me, Jack Donovan. And Pascalino picks up on the far side. I see goes into the corner with Cam Hunt. Pasqualino loses it. And there is a battle behind the net, and Lynn wraps the puck around. Matt Patcher breaking the puck into the zone. Tries to make a move, and he scores five hole. That was a good move by Matt Patchery as Chris Bonney was on him the entire time, but unfortunately just could not, could not get the puck away from him. He made a nice play coming out of his own end, bounced the puck off the, off the boards, was able to get around Alex Morgan. Might have been a little bit of an experience there, but he'll come around. Brady Roach in the neutral zone, passes it up to Peter Lounsbury. Lounsbury tries to center to Nicky Cicerone. Cicerone loses control of it and regains control of it right outside the blue line, so some of them will have to clear the zone. Joe Carey now in their own defensive end. Tries to center it, nobody home, and the ref waves it off. I'm surprised, that looked like icing to me. That might be an example of the ref wanting to keep the game moving. Lonzo with the hard four check, he's fighting in the corner for it. Lynn having some trouble, some miscommunication on who's gonna take control of that puck. And Joe Carey circles back in his own end. Carey over the red line, dumps it in. There will be no ice. Seven minutes left to go in the third period. On the far side, Nicky Cicerone seems to be taking his time. He loses a stick as Connor Bernardo tries to look for a backhand pass, but nobody's there. Cicerone skating backwards through the zone, tries to get it to Bernardo. Bernardo gets tied up. Back over to Lounsbury. Lounsbury shot and goes wide. Cicerone dumps it down behind the net. As Lounsbury picks it up. The game has definitely seemed to slow down quite a bit in these, the last half of this, this period. Two on one into the Somerville end. That pass is just behind Coppathorn. Yes. Coppathorn loses it and Joe Carey high off the glass. You're seeing some different players on both teams on the ice. That may have something to do with it. Di Filippo ties up as Nicky Cicerone shoots it right into his chest and we'll have a face off here. This is definitely an opportunity for both teams to try to get some guys who don't usually get a lot of ice time on. 
get the small nice experience at this level, kind of get used to the pace of the game, the physicality. Here's another faceoff, won by Lynn. Matt Patcher tries to go cross ice to Matt Kevin, but it's turned over. Luke Rayo circles the net. Patcher with an att attempted center to Matt Devin. Someone will regain control. Rouge to Bonnie cross ice. Bonnie to Aiden O'Donovan, who tries to just tip it lightly into the zone, but he doesn't get enough on it. Devin shot blocked by Marujo. Marujo is probably probably the freshman this year with the most uh, excuse me the most responsibility out of anybody. He's been getting a lot of playing time being on that second defensive pair. Yeah, being a top four defenseman, you're going to get a lot of playing time, and it's going to be a lot of experience for him going forward uh, every year for, uh, after this. Bonnie takes take control of the puck, looking for a pass, tries to go down deep. And everyone seems to be at a standstill as the puck looks to be at somebody skated. Squirts free. Aiden O'Donovan with a shot on net. And Di Filippo will tie it up. Uh, Lynn Ford, Matt Devin, seems to be flying the zone quite a bit, leaving his own team shorthand in, the, in his own end. Uh, not Probably not the right move at this time of the game. Uh, you really, chances are you're not going to catch up at this point in the game, so you might as well play defense and look, stop looking for the home run pass. Not only is this this kind of game a good a good chance for younger guys, more uh, less experienced guys, to get some some experience, but it's also a good opportunity for, um, uh, again, on both sides, some some older guys to work on even some defensive zone coverage that you never get that you don't usually get the chance to work on. Puck comes back into the Somerville end as Josh Amaral picks it up, looking for a pass. Gasai takes to the neutral zone. And Jake McDonald, who was down deep in the lid end, comes he had back lost up to the take stick it. went back to pick it up. McDonald tries to center it. DiFilippo gets the puck stuffed into his glove by Ricky Johnson. We'll have a stoppage of play. Four minutes and 27 seconds left to go in this game. Uh, the ah, regulation. The Somerville girls team mixed with Cambridge has a game right after this at 7 o'clock here in Somerville. Yeah, we don't see so many home games for them here. They usually play their home games in Cambridge, so it's nice to see them here in town. Like this, this Somerville Cambridge girls team wears Cambridge sweaters, so their home games are at, uh, at Simone Rink over at Twin City in Cambridge. So I'm sure those Somerville girls like to play in their home rink too. Lonsbury takes to the neutral zone. Gets edged off the puck by number 29, Cam Hunt. Good pressure by Bernardo. Not giving up on the puck. We'd like to see that from the young kids. Cicerone dumps it down deep. As Lonsbury and Gellert some pressure. There's definitely some good forecheck coming out of these kids. Cicerone looking for a pass out front goes to, I think, attempted for Morgan. Josh Amaral might have got confused, thought that was for him, tipped it, and it's shot back down deep. Lonsbury up front with a lot of time, gets a shot into DiFilippo's stomach, but it looks like the puck came loose, but the ref the ref already had the whistle in his mouth, so we'll have another stoppage. Yeah, quick whistle there, but someone will take the break. Gives them a chance to change their personnel on the ice. Oh, Donovan here on the faceoff. Comes back. To Lynn, who tries to center it, it's tied up and will come back into the Somerville end. Joe Carey skating backwards, looking for an outlet pass. Little high, caught the third tone, tipped that up high. Comes back into the defensive end, and Brady Roach, with time, tries to force a pass to, Matt De uh, to Joe Carey. Matt Devin intercepts that and puts it by Jack Donovan. Again, taking care of the puck in your own end is the number one priority. Easy giveaway there. Devin goes in and puts it in. The score being eight to three now with two minutes and 46 seconds left. Yeah. 
Just another good example that you can't start giving up this late in the game. Just like earlier, a, a few mental mistakes, a couple breakdowns, gives another team an opportunity to come back. And you mentioned Coach Kevin Wilson stressing playing a complete three-period game, and it, it shows Isn't there. Puck gets tied up in front of the Somerville bench, and Matt Devin picks it up in the Somerville end. He makes the move towards center, tries to shoot it, misfires, and Joe Carey picks it up on the half wall. Tries to jump it out, goes aft Matt Devin's cage, and goes to center ice. Ain't no doubt of him curling, looking for a pass. Nobody, oh, tries to make the pass to Pasqualino. He stopped, tried, uh, didn't realize that Aiden was going to pass. And Lynn, again, looks like they're desperate to just get the puck out of the zone by any means possible, even if that's an icing. And, and we get an icing. Pasqualino, as you mentioned, was not expecting that pass from O'Donovan. And in this game, you could probably get away with it. But in a closer game, you got to be always ready. Stick on the ice, ready for a pass, because in a, in a tie game or one goal game, that could really make a difference. Puck to the point. That's Chris Barney with a one-timer. Up and over the head of Filippo, who was screened, and Somerville takes a 9-3 lead. Just over 90 seconds left to go in regulation. Looked like a knuckleball there from the point. Not much of a celebration on the ice or in the stands after that one. No. It seems like both teams already know the result of this game. Everyone in the bleachers does. Always good to see a good team win. Ricky Johnson in the corner, fires it up the boards. To Kenny Perez. Ammer all over to Alex Morgan. Up ice to Nathan Doe. Nathan Doe over the blue line with pressure from two, two Jets. Loses the puck as Lynn starts their rush up the ice. Peter Lounsbury dumps the puck in, and he gets hit by Ricky Johnson after the dump in. And Lynn's starting to throw their weight around here. This is a time, especially for someone you can't start losing your heads. Don't retaliate, even if you think it hits late, even if you think it hits dirty. It's not worth taking the penalty, leaving the team shorthanded, or worse, getting thrown out of the game. Shot by Lounsbury is gloved up by DiFilippo with 34 seconds left. I noticed some of these Lynn Jets players are wearing eye black. It's almost like they're playing, they think they're playing at a Winter Classic game. It does get bright in here. <laughs> Got to keep the glare down. Face off to the left of DiFilippo is won by Lynn. And Lynn makes their way up ice. Alex Morgan and Tyler DeSircurns racing for the puck. Lonsbury looks, looks to reverse the puck. Alex Morgan behind that to Josh Amaral. 11 seconds left. Amaral back to Lonsbury, who can't get it. Dump back in by Lynn. Five seconds to go. Delayed offside, so Somerville has all the time in the world. And with the buzzer, Somerville advances to a 5-2-2 two two record. Just eight points away from a state tournament berth. Nice to see Somerville come in tonight, take care of business do what they needed to do. Pretty much dominated from the beginning to the end. Lynn really struggled most of the game, but it's nice to see Summerville come in and do what they have to do. It was good to see some new faces too, some of these young kids. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. That will pay off going down the road. So with that, Summerville wins nine to three against the Lynn Jets. Thank you for watching Educational Channel 15, some Highlander hockey. And we hope to see you tune in on the next home game next Wednesday, January 15th against GBL opponent Everett. Have a good night.